Ash and welcome to my channel. I am finally back home after being in Austin and having an amazing time and running deep in their 500k guarantee tournament which was such a fun time. Oh and if you're wondering why my face looks weird it's because I just got a little procedure done so my face is peeling a little bit and for a while I looked like a tomato but I'm gonna put a mask on so I don't scare anyone in there. I'm back at my local casino talking stick. I'm gonna play a 2-3 session today so I'm gonna head in there and try to win some pots and enjoy being back in my home casino. I'll see you guys in there. I get asked all the time what I use to prop up my phone when I'm recording vlogs. When I first started vlogging, I was completely lost. I didn't have a phone stand and I would try every which way to get my phone to stay upright when I was recording hands. I found this amazing high quality phone stand by Pocket Jack. Even if you're not a vlogger and you're someone who likes to be watching a show or maybe watching your favorite vlogger at the table, this phone stand is amazing. It's very durable and what I love most about it is it's very compact and it fits in one of my small bags that I like to take with me to the casino. If you're interested in purchasing Purchasing it, head to the link in my description where it takes you directly to the Amazon site. I promise you, you'll be super happy with this product and I'm happy and proud to use it at the tables. So I arrived at Talking Stick and I was ready to buy into the 2-3 no limit game 500 max buy-in. It'd be really nice to cushion the bankroll as I'm heading to play some of the WSOPC circuit events at Bally's in Vegas in just a few days. So I'm looking to win some pots and add some cash to the bankroll. In one of my very first playable hands, I look down at Ace King Offsuit under the gun two and I raise to $15. Next to act, a young kid who's been getting in the mix, he makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of Ace seven four with two spades. Great flop for my hand, as I most likely have his entire range dominated. I continue betting and make it $15. He grabs chips and then puts in a raise to 65. I think it'd be very exploitative for me to just fold here, although at these stakes, people just don't bluff enough, but again, I have top pair top kicker and I do have outs to improve, so I make the call out of position, not thrilled about it. The turn is the 10 of spades, so it brings in the flush, but we do have the king of spades, which is nice. I check and luckily he checks, so we're going to see a river card, which is the jack of hearts. I check and he bets 75, and I just don't think I can fold here. I still beat some of the hands he might overvalue, like ace nine, etc. If he check raised me on the flop with just a flush draw, I would assume he continue betting on the turn, so we're either way ahead here or way behind, so I put in the call and sure enough, he has ace four offsuit, so definitely not the start we wanted for the session. After that hand, I topped up to $500 and played a few insignificant hands, so when this hand started, I have about 450 behind, and stacks will be about 400 effective in this hand. As this hand's being dealt, there was a gentleman on the button who was very tilted. I wasn't here for it, but I guess he lost some crazy pots, and he was really stuck and wanted to gamble, so while this hand was being dealt, before he saw his cards, he said, all right, who wants to gamble? Let's get some money in the pot. So I'm under the gun too and look down at pocket aces. I raise it up and make it $15. Next to act calls the same kid who beat me with the ace four offsuit. And then the button who said he wanted to gamble raises it up and he makes it $55. I'm licking my chops at this point and I also see the small blind call the 55 and the big blind also calls the 55. So now there is over $150 of dead money in the pot and I have the goods. At the time, with effective stacks and the dead money in the middle with multiple callers, I didn't see any other raise size that made sense here besides an all-in as I can also do this with my ace-king offsuit hands and also my suited ace-kings. So at the time, I thought shoving here definitely gives me some non-nutted hands. I don't just have to have aces or kings to make this play. Folds to the button and he agonizes for a while and finally says, all right, I call. The other two fold, so now we're going heads up for over a thousand dollar pot, and I'm not sure what I want to see on the flop, but the flop comes queen high, and immediately I see my opponent about to roll over his cards, and I know what I'm about to look at. He has pocket queens, and we get sucked out on for a thousand dollar pot, and in our first two hands here, we get felted. Oh. <laughs> It's not ideal to lose your only two hands you play in the first 30 minutes of your session and get sucked out on with aces versus queens, all in pre-flop, and about 150 bucks of dead money in the middle. Uh, just, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I, I don't feel like playing cash anymore tonight. I might just go home and continue this session tomorrow. Right now we're stuck about $600. Uh, 
not ideal, really sucks. Obviously in both of those spots, I don't think there's much else I could have done. On the ace king hand, I'm not gonna fold to just a single raise on the flop. And when he bets river, I had already gotten information from one of my friends that he loves to bluff and he was kind of wild and crazy and was stuck a lot of money. So I also don't hate my call there. And then obviously there's nothing you can do when you have aces versus queens and it shouldn't affect me too much. But like I said, I just, I just don't feel like playing. So when you don't feel like playing, don't play. We'll continue this cash game session tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, I am back at Talking Stick for round two. Uh, today, probably can't go any worse than yesterday did, uh, losing my only two hands I played. Hopefully today we can win some pots and get some fun hands for the vlog. We all know that's how poker goes sometimes, so we just live through it and live to see another day and play another session. So let's get in there. Talking Stick, two, three, 600 max buy-in. I'll see you at the tables. All right, we are back, deja vu, two, three, 500 max buy-in, and we are ready to get in some pots. In one of my very first hands I get dealt, I raise pocket sevens from under the gun one. The button makes a call for 15, so we go heads up to a flop of queen, seven, six with two clubs, so we flop ourselves middle set. So I'm hoping this is foreshadowing and we're going to have ourselves a nice session. We're out of position here, but we have middle set, so we're going to try to get as much money into this pot as possible. I bet $15 and he makes the call. The turn is a six of hearts, so now we have a full house and essentially the nuts. I bet $30 and he makes the call again. The river is the five of clubs. It brings in the flush, so I wanna get max value if he has a flush or a queen. I wanna get paid, so I go for a bet of $125. He doesn't think very long before putting in the fold and said that he had a pocket pair, so I'm assuming he had something like pocket tens, maybe pocket nines. I like to go a little bit big there because I think a queen is hero calling us, and of course if he has a flush, he's gonna call or maybe even possibly put in a raise. So a little unfortunate he didn't have a strong enough hand to call us, but we went for max value. In this hand, effective stacks are gonna be about $120. There's a $6 straddle under the gun. I look down at the beautiful king queen of diamonds in the small blind and I raise it and make it $25. The big blind calls and the straddler calls, so we're going three ways to a flop. The flop is queen, 10, nine with one diamond. So we flop ourselves top pair with a king kicker, a backdoor flush draw, and a gut shot to a straight. We essentially have this board wrapped up and in most cases our hand can only improve. I have a player to my left who is playing extremely volatile. He's very tilted, bluffing off his entire stack multiple times throughout the session. He's been making a lot of mistakes and I wanna give him a chance to bluff at this pot and or get his money in bad. So I decide to check, planning to of course call any bet. So I check it over to him and sure enough, he goes all in for $108. The straddler folds and I snap call. So so we head to see all five cards. The turn is a five and the river is one of the cards I didn't want to see. It's an eight. He says, I got there and he rolls over, jack 10 offsuit. So unfortunately we take a small detour to Stuckville and hopefully we can continue to grind this up and get back on the road to Profitville. So unfortunately I have to reach in my pocket and top up. So now I'm in for $640 as I add on 140. In this hand, I raise in middle position with ace-king offsuit to $15. A short stack who was having a rough night and couldn't seem to get anything going, he decided he was gonna play for all his chips and shoves for about $70. Of course, I'm not folding, so I put in the call, the board comes out, all low cards, and I show my hand, he mucks, and luckily, we add some more chips to our stack this time. In this hand, there's a limp under the gun, a limp in middle position, and I look down at king six of clubs in the small blind, I complete for a dollar more, and the big blind checks his option, so we go four ways to a flop of king nine four with two clubs. I flop a pretty big hand here, so I wanna start getting money in the pot, so I bet $10. Only the big blind calls, so we go heads up to a turn card. The turn is the beautiful seven of clubs, so now we have a king high flush. I bet $20, and he makes the call. The river is the jack of diamonds. Now there's a lot more hands I can get called by here. If he somehow shows up with queen 10, two pair like king nine, king jack, I'm gonna get paid by those hands as well. Hopefully even get hero by a king here. So I'm gonna try and get as much as I can from him. So I put out a bet of $50, he quickly calls. I say, I have a flush. He says, nice hand and mucks and we scoop another pot.
and this hand, it folds around to the button, who's a solid 3-5 player. He raises to $15. I look down at pocket jacks in the big blind, and being out of position against a button open, I want to size up a little bit because you don't want to give the players in position a good price to call you with a wide range. So I size up to 55. He thinks for a bit and then makes the call. Knowing that he's a 3-5 player, ranges are gonna be a little bit different here as I know he'll peel here with a wider range than a 2-3 rec player. I also know he's a player that's capable of a lot. The flop comes ace, 10, seven, all spades. On this flop texture, I think we're way ahead or way behind. We also have the jack of spades in our hand, which is nice. I decide to check and keep the pot manageable and he checks back. The turn is a three of clubs, and now I want to start betting for denial and also value. I bet $45, and he folds pretty quickly. In this hand, I'm not sure if there was a straddle to six under the gun or a limp, but it folds to middle position and he makes it $15. The button calls, I decide to peel with ace 10 of hearts and under the gun makes it 40. They all called, so I decide to peel with my suited ace and the flop comes beautiful for us. It's ace, eight, six with two hearts. Unfortunately, the flop checks around and the turn brings the three of clubs. I wanna start betting here because we have a monster hand. I make it $60 and unfortunately they all fold, but we take down a nice one. In this hand, there's a limp under the gun. My friend Christian raises to 15. I make the call with pocket tens, the button, small blind, and the straddler calls, so the entire family is heading to a flop of two, three, five with two clubs. The flop checks around, the turn brings a nine. It's very likely my hand is ahead and I wanna start betting for denial and value. I make it $35. Only my friend Christian calls, so we're going heads up to a river card, which is another three. He checks and at this point, I think his range probably consists of some over cards like ace, king, king, queen, possibly a smaller pair than mine like eights or sevens, which I can get value from, but as played, I decide to check it back. I roll over my hand, he says, you're way good. I figured he said he had pocket sixes. As I was racking up my chips to cash out, a couple players wanted to buy some chips off me, so I headed to the cashier with some cash and my chips. I was in the game for $640 after topping up early and cashed out with $967 for a profit of $327. All right, so we were in the game for 650 something dollars and we cashed out with $937 for a profit of around 300. So we did get a little bit of our money back from the other session that we lost. So feels good to win some pots, feels good to leave with more chips than I came with. And overall, pretty good session today. I'm going to head home and get a workout in and do some vlog editing, but thanks for watching and tuning in. Also, just a reminder on PokerFaceAsh.com, you can find all my new merch. We have Spot Dead Apparel, Poker Face Ash logo apparel, hats, hoodies, beanies, sweatshirts, all kinds of stuff. So make sure you check it out. We've had some cool purchases and people sending me pictures. So if you do purchase, make sure you tag me so I can share it on Instagram. And also if you're not following me on Instagram, I post daily live stories and updates at pokerface underscore ash. I really hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you did, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. Remember, we're just getting started on this journey and it's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.